Hello, everybody. On behalf of Epista Life Science, I would like you to welcome you to uh, our webinar here on automatic test for life science. Uh, I'm Klaus Espy, I'm the CEO of uh, Epista Life Science, and I will be doing a little bit of presentation before we head on uh, to an actual demo. So the agenda for the webinar today um, is pretty simple. We have 45 minutes that we need to get through uh, and four points uh, on the agenda. First and foremost, uh, some intro to automated tests for life science, the considerations we have had as Epista Life Science on this subject. Talking also a little bit uh, around test frameworks and the whole uh, understanding of what automa automated test is in life science. And once I've done that, I will turn over to my colleague, Nick Larsen, who's senior consultant here at Epista Life Science, and he will perform what we call a deep dive into automated testing, as well as performing a demo uh, with some use cases and scenarios, which are important for the life science industry. So hopefully within the next 45 minutes, we'll have, we will have achieved these uh, four different points, uh, and hopefully you will all gain a better understanding of what automated test is for life science companies. It's not only us who needs to work as part of uh, this webinar, we also have some expectations uh, to you as, a, uh, as participants in this, in this webinar. And uh, first and foremost, uh, tell you a little bit about that if you would like to ask some questions while we are going uh, through the webinar, then please pay attention to uh, your uh, webinar pad where you have the possibility of pressing buttons and by that uh, asking us questions which we will do everything we can to make sure that we answer during the course of these 45 minutes. However, uh, there are a lot of people participating in this, uh, in this event, so uh, it may be that we will not be able to answer all of the questions coming in, but we will make sure uh, as part of the, the time after the webinar, we will make sure to uh, personally respond back to all the questions that we get, uh, and then also, uh, for the general questions that we that we see as part of this uh, webinar, we will do a frequently asked question, uh, which we will distribute uh, along with the webinar after uh, this event. So that's one thing that we ask you to do. The second thing uh, you will observe as part of uh, us going through this webinar is the, that we will require you or ask you politely uh, to answer some questions. Uh, and we'll be uh, using polls uh, to, to do this. And the reason for doing this is to get some more understanding of all you participants out there uh, and making sure that we shape our presentation according to your individual needs as much as we possibly can. And then later, uh, there will be an evaluation, but we'll talk more about that uh, later in this webinar. So enough uh, about the housekeeping, uh, a little bit about Epista Life Science, realizing that uh, we can spend at least 45 minutes talking about what Epista Life Science is and, and, and why we're doing what we're doing in the industry. Uh, and I personally like to talk a lot about, of, about that. But I think that a good idea here is to tell you a little bit uh, on, the, on the, the subject of why we at Epista Life Science are very interested in automated tests. And it all takes uh, its, its basis in Epista Life Sciences' vision and mission, which is uh, quite simply is to continuously improving regulatory compliance, not only uh, for ourselves, for our clients, but also for the industry. And we have a, a general saying here at Epista that uh, sometimes compliance constitutes an obstacle uh, for companies in this industry, and we need to be able to overcome these obstacles. So in cases where new technology comes into play, like the cloud, uh, and that is seen, uh, compliance is seen in, as an obstacle in that context. Epista is here to make sure that we develop uh, methodologies and tools uh, to make sure that these obstacles can be overcome and to make sure that that technology can be adopted uh, into the life science industry also. And to be very honest and very frank about this, uh, this is what we are dedicated to do. This is what we do every day. And, and the way we come across doing this in Epista Life Science is uh, that we do three specific things uh, here uh, in the company, uh, and they are on the slide here. The first thing we do is that we do pioneer, pioneer methodologies uh, and uh, to suit technologies. So new technologies out there like SharePoint, we deliver or we developed uh, 
tools that made it possible to validate SharePoint uh, a long time ago. We've been around for 10 years, uh, to be more, very precise here. Um, the cloud, another uh, big example of, of some technology coming in where life science was really reluctant uh, to adopt this technology. PISTA already back in 2013, 2014 developed tools to make sure that we could qualify and validate the cloud. With respect to the cloud, I think we're all aware of the fact that uh, running in the cloud also means that we are getting uh, a lot of updates to our uh, platforms, to our software. Um, that in life science constitutes a specific problem. And that is to make sure that we stay compliant with all these updates. And the last thing we've been working with over the last year uh, is to talk about automated test as the, as the tool to enable life science customers maintaining a validated state of uh, their cloud systems. And this is what we're going to talk uh, more about uh, in this session today. Epista is also about bridging the gap between IT, QA and line of business to make sure that we get the requirements from all three stakeholders in any organization and by that making sure that we get suitable, feasible IT uh, solutions uh, in the industry. And last but not least, we do a lot in measuring and benchmarking. So Epista, we believe probably the first company to do uh, benchmarking services around compliance to be able to measure where are we on compliance and do we run risk or do we spend too much uh, money on compliance. So this is Epista Life Science in a nutshell and, and, and from that uh, let's focus on, uh, on, on what automated testing for life science, uh, what that is about and some of the considerations that we at Epista that we have had uh, when it comes to cloud and when it comes to automatic testing. When we uh, started to investigate the uh, automated testing, it actually took its basis in, in, in cloud systems, uh, various cloud systems which have been released to the life science industry over the last five, six years, or maybe even before that. We've interviewed uh, a lot of life science companies in trying to understand what are the challenges that we see when we apply cloud-based systems uh, into our industry. And it became quite apparent that most of the companies are saying, well, it's nice to get to go to the cloud. It's nice to get it qualified. It's nice to get it validated. But the big challenge here is that when we go into the cloud, we get a lot of patches, we get a lot of updates, uh, and we need to stay in control with these updates. So we want to make sure that we maintain the validated state despite all these uh, updates. And, and, and we're, not, we're not kidding here. The number of updates that we have uh, on a cloud-based system can be pretty high. Uh, good examples from the industry is uh, Viva EDMS systems, for instance, they have three uh, updates every year, and those are mandatory uh, from, the, from the vendor. Um, if we look at the uh, Microsoft technologies, we're seeing even a bigger pace or a higher frequency of updates. Uh, and and the, the newest uh, ERP system from, from Dynamics, Dynamics 365, Finance and Operations, the initial plan was to issue 12 consecutive updates uh, every year. And I'm sure everybody realizes the fact that if we have 12 uh, updates every year and uh, we have configuration of an ERP system sitting corresponding to maybe 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 hours of configuration, the whole regression testing, the whole setup uh, regarding uh, the patch and then verification and maintaining that validated state is very time consuming. And it's very, it is requiring a lot of effort in order to be executed. We at Epista Life Science uh, took a, a, a deep dive into uh, this uh, problem and uh, investigated how we could overcome uh, this challenge. How could we bring speed into uh, maintaining the validated state while at the same time making sure that we could convince regulators that we were in control uh, of what was actually going on, despite the fact that we're putting a lot of the ex activities and a lot of the exercises that they are performed uh, by cloud vendors or not necessarily uh, life science uh, experts. What we came uh, up with uh, was pretty, uh, in, in, at least in theory, pretty simple because what we, what we uh, defined as the hypothesis of, uh, of testing and maintaining validated state was that if we were able to repeat the process test or the process tests of a given system and that we could prove that that test would come out with zero deviations, we would have the ultimate proof for the regulators when it comes to uh, 
uh, making sure that the systems are performing as uh, they were intended to. So the quest that we set out to do was to automate OQ and PQ and making sure that the automation of the OQ and PQ would be done in an efficient way so that we could execute that 12 times a year and making sure it, 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 that that was actually possible. When we started that exercise and then started to uh, talk about automated testing, we also soon realized that repeating tests consistently gives us another, a, a number of other benefits here. We will improve quality because we can have fast execution and that means that we can find more defects and we can find them earlier than we usually do when we do a normal paper-based validation. So definitely uh, an improvement here. Further to that, we can also reduce time and cost. Fast execution, which has been automated, basically means that we can do more tests uh, at the same time at the same resource, and we can run a complete suite of regression tests on a system when we have patches and upgrades, which actually means that we reduce time and cost, whilst at the same time we improve quality. So this is uh, the whole hypothesis that we, we have around uh, automated, automated, automated tests in, uh, in life science, and, and also uh, some of the, let's call it the efficiency gains that we can get uh, in utilizing uh, automated tests in a life science uh, company. But we also have some other uh, considerations around this because implementing automated tests uh, comes with a lot of different considerations and also comes with some challenges, uh, to be honest. Uh, and, and some of the considerations might be important to share at a webinar like this uh, because those considerations are pretty consistent are pretty much the same for everybody who wants to consider automated testing as, as part of their validation concepts for a life science company. So some of the, uh, some of the considerations that we were having were, 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 were quite, uh, quite simple, but at the same time, very time consuming. So, so the first consideration uh, uh, regarding automated test was around what do we actually want from the automated test? Do we want to have a single automated test tool which goes for only one specific system, or do we want to consider to have automated test uh, uh, tools which can go cross-platform? So not only testing one specific system, but also uh, uh, test uh, a variety of systems. Uh, so for instance, in the life science industry, it would be SAP, uh, Viva, and, and you basically utilizing the same platform, the same test platform across these different uh, platforms. Another thing we were considering was also that, that when we are talking about automated test tools, and when we're talking about mimicking what we do normally in validation, we also need to have automated test tools, which can basically be flexible, where we can make a test plan, where we can manipulate it, where we can ex exert it for uh, more test data, where we can repeat steps and where we can be, yeah, all in all flexible in the way that we run our tests. So also definitely a consideration for you uh, when you're looking at automated test uh, tools. Multi-system, also a, a considera consideration we had. So we would like, when we do tests, sometimes we would like to go across different systems. So doing things in an ERP system, which, which might interface to another system like a document management system, and being able to test both of these systems in the same test script. So the, the ability of that system or the test tool to accommodate test plans that run across different systems. And, and then last, but definitely not least, looking at automated test tools where we are not coding the test, because you know, we have the validation uh, challenge coming in then. So looking at automation, uh, automated test tools where we can do the test scripts or make the test scripts without doing code, where a normal person would go in and do the test uh, himself and let the system execute that uh, for him. So be intuitive and without the use of code. For us, very important because then we don't have to discuss the validation challenge of that test script, whether it's coded in the right way or whether it's not coded in the right way. So all in all, a lot of different uh, considerations here, uh, which are all very, very important in, this, in the strategies that we set out for, for automated testing. Uh, and, and, and these are definitely the most important ones that we saw there. 
And speaking about the validation one, uh, so we get this question uh, a lot, and I'm sorry for laughing a little bit uh, or smiling loudly while I'm saying this. When we talk about automated testing, uh, I don't know how many times we've had the, the question. I think I can say without, uh, and, and still being trustworthy, that 100% uh, is probably the number uh, of, of uh, the discussion we've had regarding uh, automated testing. This, this question always come up. Does the tool really have to be validated? And of course, um, that depends uh, on the actual uh, test tool, uh, which level of uh, verification is required. However, uh, if, if we look into, uh, and then we have a slide here, uh, talking about uh, the, uh, the best practice that is coming out of GAMP, uh, and uh, it's, it's actually there specifically on, on page uh, 163, they, they categorize uh, automated test tools uh, as category one, under the assumption that that, is, that, that tool has a, an accepted track record. Um, in that case, we can, uh, we can categorize this as a, as a category one. This does not mean that we don't have to do anything. It has to mean it, it means that we we should have proof, uh, but we can we can we can uh, focus on only critical requirements, including audit trail, test data management, uh, the way tests are run, uh, versioning, uh, and and so back and so forth. So so important to say here on the question: Does the tool uh, have to be validated? It doesn't have to be validated as such. We can treat it as a category one. But there are specific measures that we need to set in place, but these are easily overcome. Uh, and, and as long as we have a good plan for it, uh, it isn't really overwhelming what needs to be done on that one. Another question, and here we are probably not at 100%, but we are down to 90% or maybe uh, even 85% of, uh, of the discussions we've had with people around automated tests uh, lately. The question is, what is automated test, really? And it's, it's, it's quite intriguing uh, because if, if we look at the whole entire subject, automated testing, uh, there are very different opinions as to uh, what that is. Uh, and we've heard everything from uh, people saying, well, that's something they do in banking, to something like, uh, we can't do this in life science due to several reasons, including validation. Uh, and some saying, well, that's paperless validation. And, and a lot of different examples of people saying different things when we talk about automated testing. We would like to uh, define uh, automated testing or testing as such through what we call a test framework. Um, a test framework consisting of uh, many different disciplines, if I can put it that way, which comprises uh, everything from test strategy. So how do we manage test? How do we set up uh, automated or paperless uh, testing? How do we manage our test data? Uh, how do we write this into our uh, validation plans? How do we utilize this on our specific system? So talking about test and automated test on a strategy level. We can also define a part of it as talking about a test management tool. So what is test management? That is making sure that we handle the test in the right way, that we have the traceability uh, to documentation, that we can, that, that we can do uh, things like connecting uh, deviations and stuff like that uh, to the actual test that has been run. Uh, also very, very important and, and, and part of this. And then there is the actual test automation and, and that's what we're gonna deep dive into today. Uh, and, and Nick will do that uh, in a not too far future, I guess within the next couple of minutes, which is about executing the test plans on the system while at the same time making sure that we get the right test artifacts as part of that test. And this is what we're deep diving in today. And then of course, we have some, uh, let's call it, uh, components or other components as part of uh, the test framework, which is things like the electronic document management system, where we can handle the documentation, we can handle the, the test plans and stuff, and, and things like a deviation handling, where we handle our uh, deviations uh, and stuff like that. If you're asking yourself as a company whether you're ready for, uh, for automated test, please consider this entire test framework, because this may be a journey that you are about to take where you start by defining the test strategy, where you define what is this uh, compared to your paper test today? How is this uh, integrated into your company? Which system are applicable to this? Step two is probably looking at a test management tool where we can align test data, where we can have test protocols in a, in a, in a good way, where we can probably enable things like paperless uh, validation. And then on a third level, talk about the test automation. How do we actually execute the test on the specific system that I have uh, in my company. B2B, 
be aware that there is difference here. Be aware that there are different terminology. Be aware that there is no standards for talking about this in the industry, something that we need to align on, all of us, before we go and talk about uh, automated testing. And what did I say when I started? I said that there was work for you guys also. So I said, ask the questions if you have them. And then I said, we would be asking you questions. And, and now this is a time for a poll and we will be asking you uh, some question uh, on this uh, in order to get some guidance as to how we proceed from here. And that question is, is uh, quite simply, what is your biggest barrier to getting started with automated testing? And you can select multiple options uh, on the list uh, below. We have things like it's not in our test strategy today. So, so talking about test strategy. If we can't automate entire process, why bother? That's the second option. Third option is the lack of resources to find and implement the tool. Fourth option is lack of resources to digitize tests and processes. And the fifth one is the right technology doesn't exist out there. We're going to leave you a few seconds uh, to, so we can see what, is, uh, what your re responses to this poll would be. So it's taking you a while here to to get this in. I hope uh, you can find your way to vote here on uh, on the screen. So we've gotten to 60% replies right now. And I'm looking at the, the people around me here so that they give me some guidance as to when we can continue. People who know me know that uh, I'm very, very bad at being silent at the same time as I'm waiting and very impatient. So we'll wait another 20 seconds. And then I think, uh, thank you very much for, uh, for giving us the data. And let's see what the results of this are. So the, the most important one seems at least is 59% uh, of you saying that you have the lack of resources to digitize tests and processes. Hopefully uh, the demo that uh, Nick is giving us later will show you that, uh, that maybe uh, that we don't require that much resources to do uh, to do this. As in as number second is the lack of resources to find and implement the tool. Fair enough. It's a it's a it's a quick market out there. A lot of things going on and uh, and and becoming a very convoluted market on test tools as well. So that makes sense. Not in our test strategy. Is probably back to the conservatism of the life science industry where we like paper very much. Uh, so thirty percent uh, saying that. It's interesting that only 2% says if we can't automate the entire process, why bother? So, so I, I think we can say that people really can see the benefit of auto test automation as long as the right technology is out there. 16% of you think that the right technology doesn't exist on that. Thank you very much for, for that data. Uh, let's continue uh, with, our, with our webinar. So I talked uh, somewhat about the, uh, the the overall considerations. I talked uh, somewhat about the scope for automated testing uh, when we talk about life science and and where we believe that that uh, sits in the in, in the validation cycle. Uh, I would also like to talk to you a little bit about how do we look at the uh, automated test tool. And and Nick is going to show you uh, a demo on the product called Automated Boost for Life Science, which is a test tool which has been, let's call it, optimized for, uh, for use within life science. And what do we mean uh, about optimizing things for use within life science? Yeah, we mean exactly the stuff that uh, Gamp was talking about, making sure that we have a test tool there which has the functionality that would normally be required in order to perform real validation tests uh, and real process testing. And that includes uh, functionality such as so what we call GXP tags. This is the ability of uh, of a company to talk about whether a thing is GXP critical or not GXP critical. So we can mark that up uh, as part of the test that's being executed. We're talking about audit trail on data, audit trail on tests, and the, the, the ability uh, living up to 21 CFR Part 11, the ability to 
uh, monitor changes to uh, whatever we do in the in, in the in the tool. Version control goes without saying, so we are capable of baselining our test tools and uh, and and uh, we can enable real version control of the test. It's something as as nice as infrequent releases. So rather than having 12 uh, releases every year on the test tool itself. Uh, we're down to a, a, a number of two, which makes uh, sure that in the life science industry that we shouldn't be moving too fast in a, in a conservative world. It's the ability to perform real screenshots, uh, real marked screenshots where we can see acceptance criteria, et cetera. And it's, it's uh, the ability to present reports of, uh, of, specific, uh, of specific tests, which we can then release to QA or inspectors or whatever, uh, whatever is, is feasible here. Part of this is also to have the connectors to the to the systems that are most important in the in the life science industry and automated boost for life science. Quite frankly, has connectors to both Microsoft Dynamics 365, SAP for HANA, Viva, TraceLink, Office 365. Uh, so a lot of uh, integration possible with this, and a lot of testing across these different platforms is possible with this system. And meet the team uh, who made it possible with uh, with Boost. It is the combination of uh, the best of two worlds, we believe. It's Epista Life Science with more than 10 years of expertise in life science consulting, uh, with a lot of life science and validation uh, experience. Putting that on uh, X Plus, who have been developing uh, automated test tools uh, for, for a long, long time, which is a Microsoft Gold Partner, and in the inner circle of our Microsoft business applications. So good at developing uh, tools uh, like test tools. And by that, we generally do believe that we bring the best uh, from two worlds in getting an automated test tool out there, which does not only work as an automated test tool, but which is also uh, feasible for the life science industry. And with that, I wanna hand it over to my colleague, Nick, uh, Nick is responsible for automated testing uh, within Epista Life Science, uh, and I'm sure he'll be happy to uh, take you through some uh, some demo on uh, on Boost for Life Science. Yes. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Nick Larsen. I'm a senior consultant here at Epista. Um, I'm going to take you through some uh, some cases today and and show you a, a demo of this. Um, just a, a quick intro. So, so what use cases do we have for this? Uh, uh, as Klaus mentioned, uh, automated boost is a uh, web-based test tool, so we can test web-based applications. Uh, the use cases would be functional tests. So, if you have uh, functions that you need to secure are in control and, and working, you can do your test on this. Uh, Klaus also spoke about regression testing, which are that you can handle these updates and patches. So create your pro projects with all your processes and schedule them for, uh, for running when you have your patches and updates and look at the outcome. It's also possible to do performance tests. So if you want real life performance tests on your processes, it's just about adding your users and uh, making the test run parallel to test performance. Other than that, you can also use it for uh, business processes. So if you have uh, your user creation, you might have 500 users that you need to create. You can just uh, do a looped process where you create uh, one user at a time and then have the script loop through all the users. Um, I'm going to show you some scenarios today. Um, so those are multiple users in one script. So logging in with one test user and continuing with another. Um, you're also able to run your test across different platforms. So we can start in uh, Viva, we can go to Dynamics, and we can finish in TraceLink if we want that. Uh, you're also able to take data, so save variables that you want to use in another application. So starting in Dynamics, creating a, a customer 
taking that customer name to Viva and creating a registration based on that. We're also able to do negative testing, end-to-end -end testing. So build your scripts in small building blocks and combine them to one big end-to-end -end test and run that through. Um, as this is uh, running and you are able to schedule tests, you can also do daily sanity check or smoke testing if you want to know if your system is, is working as uh, expected. And you'll be able to see the, the performance on each step. So there will be how many seconds each step took. And you'll be able to check if, if those are OK and running up to your uh, business's KBIs. So what can be tested? Uh, this is a, a web-based, so client-based applications. Uh, we're not able to test with this tool. And testing that requires use of uh, hardware, uh, scanning, etc. You are also able to schedule your tests, so uh, you can monitor performance on your applications and find bottlenecks and faulty features. So you don't have to wait for patches and updates. You can run this daily and check if if configuration settings and so on have impact to your uh, to your test scripts. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to jump over to the demo now. So here, this is uh, Automated Boost, which is uh, built with uh, the five panes you see here on the top. You have projects, you have scripts, you have the scheduler, the history, and the settings. So the settings is just where you configure the system. You add the, the systems you want to run tests upon, and you <clears throat> create your virtual users that you want to use in your test scripts. History is, uh, is uh, a list of all test runs that you run on your test scripts. Uh, you have a unique session ID so you can reference the, the test scripts. Um, scheduler is where you schedule your uh, scripts and projects to run <coughs> on a daily basis or bi-weekly or every month or what you need is. And the projects is where you create your structure. So how do you want to work with the test scripts and, and in which structure do you want to perform it? Uh, it could be uh by versioning or by system or by application uh, it's it's up to you you're able to create um, create subfolders as well and you are able to select a project and schedule execution so if you have a, a dynamics uh, patch or update and you have uh, your project with 200 uh, processes and scripts that you want to run, you can just schedule your execution. Um, yes. And this tool is based on uh, recording and replaying. So I'm just going to take you through uh, a couple of scripts here to show you how easy it is to work with. Um, yeah so here by saying add we can create um, a new script and we select the environment that we want to run on and use the default user and then the script is started so here uh, you will have all the test steps. So when we record, each click will be recorded in here. And you have different options to work with your script. But let's just go ahead and start recording. 
So now it's going to open up the recorder and we will be able to record the script. Uh, the recorder and the, the player is uh, basically the same. So uh, yeah, it's very easy to work with. I press start recording and I click uh, all my test steps through. And as we go along, you can see the recorder records the, the steps. You are able to um, delete steps if you clicked, uh, if you made a click that didn't make sense. <clears throat> So, and now we have recorded our first script. We will save the script and we will go back here. So now we have created our test scripts. Uh, this will check the, the backup status of our uh, Office 365 for OneDrive and SharePoint. Um, so Nick, there's a question uh, from uh, from some of the uh, attendees. So is the, the question here is uh, is the default user the user who is logged in? No, it's not. You're be you're able to uh, define which users. So you have on your project your virtual users. So the user you logged in is not the same as the one running the test scripts. Those will be the uh, test users. So going back to the script, we now have our uh, steps. Each step has properties uh, that you can see here. We can, if we made a mistake and uh, did something wrong or clicked in the wrong uh, order, we can reorder the steps. If we have created a very cool sequence, we can copy it and use it in other scripts or later in the scripts. Uh, we are also able to disable the step if you want to keep it, but you're not sure if it makes sense. Uh, and we're able to toggle optional. So going through a, a test script and, and the steps, you might have uh, pop-ups that you need to handle, but they not they might not always be there. So we can say, okay, this step is optional. So if we have a pop-up, we can handle it. If if not, then we just continue. Um, so this is basically Nick, this is this is down to the flexibility that we were discussing before. Yes, so the exactly. the capabilities of recording it in an easy way, and then afterwards taking it back in and then manipulate it how, as much as we possibly yeah. want to uh, manipulate yeah. the action. And if you compare compare it to Airset from Microsoft for Dynamics, then you would have to redo and recall the whole recording. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So let's go back here. Uh, so this is this is our script. We are not really doing anything other than clicking uh, buttons. So we want to record new steps. So we open our recorder again. We can see that it's highlighting where the steps are going to be. So we're just gonna mimic the the first five steps that we did. And we are going to take some data from the screen. So what we are going to do here when we are in, we're going to uh, validate that the uh, backup was done today. And if not, the script is going to fail. So here I want to record. So I press the recorder and then I, then I press this icon. This icon makes me, uh, uh, does it possible to screen capture data? So I can select the item and I can create a variable. So that would be uh, backup. 
today. And we can say stop and stop. So now we have captured the data on the screen. We can see the step six and we can see the original value. So at this point, I want to uh, create a condition. So if this is true, we can do something with the step. So we want to check up status. And we want that after we get the value, we want to do it from a variable that we just created back up today. And we want to make sure that it's not equal uh, to this that we got from the screen, because then it's taken yes today. Uh, if this is not equal, uh, then we should continue, or we can log and continue. It depends. So we can say uh, back up. Okay, uh, but if this is uh, an issue and, 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 it's, and it's not equal, then we say uh, back up not okay. So Nick, just to just to uh, compare this to a normal validation script, script that we normally do on paper, what we've been doing right now is you use the recorder to do all the transport steps, if we can put it that way. So all the clicking taking us to a specific point and what you built there was an acceptance criteria yeah. for that specific yeah. test so that we know that the system will actually verify a specific parameter on the screen and then we'll see what happens if it's okay and what happens if it's not okay yeah exactly so there's a question nick uh, while you're playing a little bit here so uh, which is uh, does this tool, tool support par parameterization that's a very difficult word uh -huh. for a dane to say in english for example run test script with multiple values to a field yeah so if we we can we can uh, run scripts in loops and apply different values to a field if you need to test the the uh, field validation if uh, the data structure is correct uh, so that's possible i think it's also possible to to use external data sources uh, which we can apply also as part of the test uh, sorry the acceptance criteria to the actual test step so also the opportunity to repeat uh, stuff with different uh, variables different yes. values stuff like that so it's a good question thank you for that so we're just gonna run the script here and see that we have all the clicking yeah so now it go through the script is doing all the clicking uh, and hopefully we will get the value and being able to do uh, the check if uh, if it's okay or not and Nick, there's a question here this runs on anything that is web-based yes it does okay yeah, so our script failed because the backup was done yesterday and not today. Um, so this might be okay if it would be a negative test. So we can actually change the condition here. So if this is equal to this, then we are okay or if it fails then we are also okay so we can manipulate the the output and the acceptance criteria uh, based on the data that we want but only when we build the, the script right yes exactly yeah so, so uh, this is uh, configurations to your right mm. you also have We'll be able to just show you if we have built a script and you want to use 
this to create the login for the Viva applications. We can copy those. We can say um, that we want to create a new script here and add that. We can say Viva login. And we can paste that. So you can build small chunks and use those in uh, in multiple scripts going forward. So building a login uh, component, building a test component to a specific t feature, and then you can use it across different end-to-end -end tests. So we have a lot of uh, technology questions come in right now, and I think we will revert back uh, on those in uh, in writing uh, and probably put them in as in as part of the FAQ that I was mentioning before. Uh, we will we will make sure we do that after the webinar. So things about the browser browsers, uh, support of different browser types, etc. We will make sure that we that we get that uh, answered uh, after this uh, webinar. Okay, so uh, unfortunately we are running out of time here. Uh, we'll be happy to show you more. Um, but what you also get here at the end is, uh, if you want, a free evaluation. So, so what do we mean by that? That would be a uh, examination of your test framework that uh, Klaus mentioned earlier. So are there any gaps that you need to address before starting with the automated test? We can uh, drill down to your specific needs of systems, uh, Viva, Tracelink, Master Control, uh, whatever you need that is web-based, we can have a look at that. And then in step three, you probably have all the things you need to get started with automating your tests. And being very cautious about time, uh, Nick, thank you very much uh, for this small uh, demonstration of, uh, of the tool. Uh, please uh, continue do, making your questions. We will make sure that the questions that we receive uh, on this channel, that we get those replied or replied to uh, as part of, uh, of, uh, of the evaluation of the webinar. Um, so please uh, keep writing down those uh, specific questions. Uh, and also, again, you received, uh, as Nick was mentioning, that uh, survey after the webinar. Fill it in uh, if you have anything that you want to see more of, and then we'll make sure that we, we get back to you uh, in due time. So on that note, thank you very much uh, for your participation in this webinar. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and on behalf of Epistle Life Science, I would like to wish you uh, a good day and a good evening. There is a recording available uh, of this uh, webinar, which we will distribute uh, right after this uh, webinar has been finished. Thank you very much.